Texturing interior surfaces, such as walls and ceilings, is a popular finish in the U.S., adding both value and distinction to any job. Before beginning a texture project, some contributing factors to consider include equipment selection, nozzle selection, airflow setting, material flow setting, and the actual material. These factors will greatly affect achieving your desired textured finish. Another important step is mixing your material correctly, paying close attention to its consistency during the job. In this video, we will discuss the types of texture material, pattern sizes, guidelines for mixing, and equipment. The most common material used is drywall joint compound or mud. This can be purchased in premix or powder form. Regardless of the type of material you are working with, in order to achieve the best finish, it's essential to mix and thin out the material until the desired consistency is reached. There are two basic types of drywall joint compound. Pre-mixed joint compound starts out thick with a paste-like consistency. This type of joint compound will come in a bucket or box with everything included. However, most pre-mixed joint compound needs to be thinned to meet the pattern criteria. A benefit of pre-mixed material is convenience, requiring less mixing and less water. Powdered joint compound is available as both standard and fast setting. With the addition of water, standard powdered joint compound material looks similar to the premix previously shown and includes workability and set dry time. If time is an issue, fast setting material contains unique chemical compounds that react and set quickly when exposed to water, hence its name. Powdered material, both standard and fast setting, will need to be thinned according to the manufacturer's directions. Typically, most contractors spraying texture do not prefer fast setting material because of the fast setup time and the constant and thorough cleanup that's required. Generally speaking, thinner drywall mud creates more output and a finer finish, while thicker drywall mud creates less output and a coarser finish. Now that the basics have been covered, here are some tips and tricks for a successful texture spraying job. Using the right mixing tool is important in achieving the desired consistency. Look for mixing blades that are specifically designed for drywall joint compound. Standard drills could be damaged if used to mix heavy compounds. So when mixing material mechanically, go for a heavy duty drill or a drill mixer designed exclusively for texture and drywall mud. Most equipment can spray thin material without a problem. It's when using a thicker material that overall performance and productivity can fail if you don't have the right size pump. Larger pumps will be more forgiving and productive for a job requiring thicker material to be sprayed. Mixing texture material to the right consistency is crucial for a successful overall finish. One way to test consistency is using the finger test. After mixing, simply run your finger through the center of the material. If the material smoothly folds back on itself, this indicates a medium to light mix. When a mixture does not fold back on itself and there's still a line drawn in the material, this typically means the material is possibly too thick to spray. Some equipment comes with a material viscosity ball. If you gently set the dry clean ball on top of the material and it completely sinks below the surface within 10 seconds, it indicates that this is a good medium to light mix. On the other hand, if the ball sits atop the material and does not sink, this means you have a thick mix that could possibly be too thick to spray. You can always add more water to thin out the material, but once water is added, there is no way to remove it without starting over. So start with a thicker material and add water when necessary. Some material may thicken as it sits, which can slow production or impact your finished consistency. Frequently mixing will aerate and shear the material, keeping it fresh and more applicable. For powdered material, an important aspect to remember is to add a few inches of water before adding the powder texture material into the mixing container. This ensures the material will not clump or stick to the side of your mixing container. Lastly, be sure to save some material in case the mixture is too thin and needs to be thickened. Use these tips and tricks, and with a little practice, you'll be spraying texture like a pro in no time.